coming up. Barack gets smart with the power. You got the touch! You got the power! Yeah! Plus, Walmart gets into the death game. Above board this time. And, Scientology's taking some hits. You sunk my tattle ship. All this and more. This is the new show. Hello and welcome to the new show. I'm Artie Sequera. And I'm Brendan McNamara. This week brought to you by Crying Alone While Listening to Bonnie Vare. You know you've done it, so just own up. Was. Our top story, the war crimes trial of Yugoslav Serbian leader Radovan Karadzic started this week without the defendant. Karadzic is boycotting his trial, claiming he hasn't had enough time to prep his defense against two counts of genocide and nine other war crimes between 1992 and 1995. The strange part is, it's true, his defense is weak, because there is none. While touring a field of solar energy panels in West Central Florida this week, President Barack Obama announced a $3.4 billion program aimed at building a smart power grid for the nation. Skeptical outcry immediately responded with, how smart is this power grid if it lives in Florida? California Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger got a little snippy this week after State Assemblyman Tom Amiano said the governator could, quote, kiss my gay ass. Schwarzenegger then vetoed the assemblyman's bill, attaching a note where the first letters of each line spelled out F-U-C-K-Y-O-U. Nicholas Cage was immediately called in to decode the complex cipher, and it's said to reach back to the founding fathers when Benjamin Franklin sent a similar message to the Continental Congress when they asked him to return from Paris. Although his also featured some unflattering drawings of his undercarriage. Fast food giant McDonald's will no longer rule in Iceland. The three McDonald's franchises in Reykjavik are the latest victims of the collapse of the Icelandic Krona. Now natives will have to satisfy their cravings with local haunts Tikruf, Snurldal, and Bjork's House of Meat. A new report finds the U.S. healthcare system wastes between $500 and $800 billion a year. The overuse of antibiotics and lab tests makes up the majority of the loss, but fraud, redundant paperwork and mistakes also seem to lend a hand. Also not helping, many hospitals only heat with money furnaces. A group of Shriners in Atlanta was robbed this week. Thieves raided the charity's storage facility and stole seven of the classic Shriner mini cars. People, sorry, police say to be on the lookout, but not to worry about license plate numbers. Just look for people in miniature cars not wearing a fez. And that was this week's Totally True Story. Totally true story, totally true story. I can't believe it's true. How about you? It's totally true. Corporate giant Walmart is known for killing the competition, but now they're officially in the death business. The company is now selling caskets online at low prices meant to undercut funeral homes. Part of the way they'll keep their costs down, however, will be to double book some of the caskets with the illegal employees they starve to death. Andre Agassi has the tennis world a titter with some shocking claims in his forthcoming autobiography, Open. The eight-time Grand Slam champion admitted he used crystal meth while still competing. He began using it the year he married Brooke Shields. 
Wait, you won more than half your titles and married Brooke Shields after using meth? Kids, just say yes. It's been a tough week for Scientology. A French court convicted the Church of Fraud and fined the organization heavily. And now they've lost one of their celebrity members, director Paul Haggis. The crash director said in an official statement that he was leaving the church after 35 years due to their distinctly unfriendly position on homosexuality. The new show has no desire to offend the organization, so we'd just like to say we have no idea what he's talking about. The Walt Disney Company is offering refunds for its Baby Einstein series. Despite their popularity, there has been no discernible uptick in the intellect of children who've watched them, and in fact, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends zero screen time for children under two. As far as the adults who thought a video would make their stupid kid a genius, they should seek their refund elsewhere. Perhaps Atlantis? And that's all for the news show this week. I'm Brendan McNamara. And I'm Artie Sequera. Stay gold, pony boy. Stay gold. See you next week.